Hello, my dear students, my dear boys and girls. Many of my students have been constantly requesting me to read with them William Wordsworth's poem, Daffodils. And you know that Daffodils is a very good poem composed by William Wordsworth. And before it, I am giving you a short introduction that William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge, S.T. Coleridge, were two bosom friends. And they jointly wrote a book, Lyrical Ballads. And in this book, Samuel Taylor Coleridge gave a theory about poetry, about romantic poetry. According to him, emotion must be recorded or must be composed instantly or immediately after you have got it. And then it will be a pure romantic poem. I am giving you the idea in a nutshell. But William Wordsworth told his friend that no, emotion must be recollected in tranquility. And that is the theory of romantic poem. However, the two friends wrote this book, Lyrical Ballads, and on the theory of lyrical ballads, Wordsworth composed a poem, Daffodils. And you know that the age of William Wordsworth is from 1770 to 1850. And before it, three great incidents happened or occurred. That is the French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution, and the Freedom Fight of America. And Wordsworth took up just nature and the denigrants of nature, like mountains, hills, sky, sea, river, trees, birds, and even human beings living in the midst of nature and what sort dealt with even the commonest aspect of nature daffodils is a kind of wild flower and these flowers bloom in plenty in England by the side of the lake beneath the trees and everywhere Though they are wild flowers, they have a lure, they have an attraction, and those who have eyes can enjoy the enchanting beauty of the flowers. So Wordsworth and his sister Dorothy Wordsworth used to travel together by the side of the lake in the mountains, valleys, etc. And they were traveling together everywhere because they knew that human life is short-lived and when they will not be able to go to those distant places to enjoy the rivers, the hills, the mountains, the seas, the birds, etc. They will remember it, them in their old age, in tranquility. However, daffodils is a kind of wild flower that blooms in plenty in England. Now let us read the poem. I wandered lonely as a cloud 
the i am reading this poem from pelgrims golden treasury from pelgrims golden treasury i wander lonely as a cloud that means the poet was wandering lonely just like the pieces of clouds as the clouds float or sail across the sky he was also wandering lonely there was nobody with him and this is an example of simile simile means the comparison of two things and as like etc are used to suggest the comparison you see that i wandered lonely as a cloud as the clouds float or sail across the sky i was also roaming about strolling or walking about lonely that floats on high over wells and hills wells is actually the poetic form of valleys and what is valley valley is a plain land between two hills or mountains the clouds which sail across the sky over the mountains over the valleys over the hills i was also walking about or moving about lonely when all at once while i was walking the poet says while i was walking or moving about all at once that is suddenly i saw a crowd that means my glance fell on a crowd here crowd means the crowd of people but no here crowd means the host of golden daffodils the host of golden daffodils the host of golden daffodils have been compared to a crowd so it is an example of metaphor it is an example of metaphor here is also a comparison but the comparison is not explicit it is implied remember it where did the daffodils bloom beside the lake beneath the trees the daffodils bloomed beside the lake and beneath the trees so there were many trees beside the lake and the daffodils bloomed in plenty innumerable daffodils bloomed beside the lake and beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze and the daffodils were flapping their petals in the winds in the gentle breeze in the gentle breeze in the mild breeze in the mild wind they were dancing and fluttering and here it is an example of personification and here human qualities have been attributed to the daffodils now come to the second stanza continuous as the stars that shine they were endless the daffodils were endless as if they had no end like the stars here the stars that shine and twinkle the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way here milky way means galaxy galaxy including the solar system at night if you look at the sky you can see in a line billions of billions of stars that twinkle and shine that is galaxy that is milky way they stretched in never ending line that means the daffodils extended themselves in never ending line as if the 
line had no ending along the margin of a bay here bay means creek it is the inlet of the sea and the daffodils bloomed along the inlet of the sea along the creek 10000 saw i at a glance the poet didn't count the daffodils they were countless they were innumerable and that is why the poet in an ecstasy in his happy mood in his joyful mood he says that he saw the daffodils at a glance as if they were 10000 in number tossing their heads that means they were moving their heads to and fro in the in the breach in the gentle breach as if they were engaged in a happy dance joyful dance that is called sprightly dance now come to the third stanza the waves beside them danced not only the daffodils were dancing not only the daffodils were tossing their heads to and fro the waves were also dancing in the breach as if they were lapping the shore lapping the inlet of the sea but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee but the daffodils surpassed surpassed the waves in dancing in their joyful mood the waves were dancing the daffodils were dancing but according to the poet the daffodils surpassed the sparkling waves and why are the waves sparkling because sunlight has fallen on the waves when the waves were breaking into little waves they were sparkling they were shining the waves in glee that is in joy so the daffodils surpassed the waves in their joyful mood a poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company in such a happy company in such a mesmerizing atmosphere in such an emerging environment in such a bewitching atmosphere a poet could not but be gay that means could not but be happy a could not a poet could not but be joyful a poet could not but be happy clear in such a jocund company in such a joyful company in such a cheerful company that is jocund company i gazed and gazed that means the poet could not prevent himself from gazing at from staring at the daffodils which were dancing in a joyful mood but little thought it is called art for art sake it is called art for art sake an art cannot be judged by treasure wealth money etc so the poet did not think of any treasure or wealth or anything else what wealth the so to me had brought the sight of the daffodils had brought him only joy only happiness he did not think of the daffodils in any other term any other treasure any wealth any asset etc for oft when on my couch i lie in vacant or in pensive mood pensive means thoughtfully gloomy apparently gloomy but thoughtful in vacant that is empty because the poet sits in his sofa or in his couch often 
in his vacant or in pensive mood in his leisure time when there is nothing to do detached from any domestic duties or responsibilities he sits in his coach he sits in his sofa and at that time the daffodils flash upon his inward eye and at that time the daffodils appear suddenly appear in his mind's eye and that is the bliss of solitude and that is the blessing of tranquility and it is the bliss of solitude means it is the blessing of tranquility and then my heart with pleasure fills and the poet doesn't want anything else and at that time his heart leaps up with joy with the dancing daffodils the daffodils are dancing in his mind and his mind is also dancing with the daffodils and it is called romanticism because only nature is the solace nature can heal up any earthly burning sensation so what's what is called the father of romanticism and he has dealt with all the natural objects in his poem tintar nabe ode to immortality he has dealt with all the natural objects and let us take farewell today goodbye my dear boys and girls please don't forget to subscribe my channel if you like my teaching if you like what i am speaking to you trying to communicate to you and i hope that i have successfully read with you what's what's poem japanese thanking all of you goodbye stay safe